Hi folks, welcome to this video on long-term bond liabilities. In this example, we're going to do a little bit of a review in the first part of the video and remind you of how to calculate the present value of, bo of a bond, record the bond, and associated interest, and also accrue interest um, uh, at an intervening year end. So perhaps a year end occurs uh, between interest payment dates. Uh, the other thing we're going to show you in the second part of the video is we're going to focus a little bit about on, on a situation when the bond date is different from the issue date and how we count the uh, proceeds from the investor to the issuer in that situation. So let's begin with the first situation which is basically a review of bonds. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with this example here. Okay, we're on January 1st, 2005, a company issues uh, 200,000 7.5% bonds that are dated January the 1st. Interest is paid annually on December 31st. The bond matures in 2009, so your uh, term of the bond is five years, and the yield is 8%. So we can see we have a discount bond because the bond is paying less interest than the market is for investments of similar, uh, uh, of, of similar risk. So when we record the issue of the bond, we need to um, uh, calculate the present value of the bond so that we know, oops, just saw a typo there, so that we know how much cash we can expect to receive on the bond. So again, I've used your financial calculator keystrokes, uh, assuming here um, that uh, using the assumptions of an 8% yield, and we know that uh, at the end of the five-year period that the issuer will pay the investor 200000 So I've got it as a plus minus here, which makes it a, a, a negative in your calculator. Uh, so that we know from the perspective of a company, they're going to be paying it out, so it's an outflow. A company is also paying out to investors $15,000 in total interest. That's an outflow, and we get that by multiplying the coupon rate times the face value. We know I slash Y is 8, your yield, your term is 5, so compute PV would give us the present value of $196,007, which should be less than the face value because it's a discount bond. So when we record the cash received and the value of the liability, we also record a discount on the bond, and discount accounts are normally debit balances, and the difference between the face value and the amount of cash received, which is also the carrying value of the bonded issue date, is $39.93. Now, to do an amortization table, we're only going to do it for the first two full periods, which would be all of 2005 and 2006. So you remember in a previous course you had done bond tables, but this is just a review of what it might have looked like or something like what it would have looked like in your class. So you would have had the date, the amount of the interest payment, so I'll just make sure everything lines up here. Um, you would also see that you'd have uh, an interest expense column, an amount of discount, some of which gets amortized, and at the beginning of the year, how much unamortized discount you have, which in our case at issue date was $39.93, to give you a net liability at issue date of $196,007, which is the amount of cash you received at issue. Notice there's no payment and no expense booked because this is at one point in time at the issue date. However, over the one year period to the end of 05, we did make a payment to 15000 In fact, we made it at this date. And over that one year period, we booked interest expense of 15681 and how do we get that? Well, again, we're assuming IFRS and the effective interest method being applied. And in that case, we're going to take the net liability of the bond and multiply it by our yield, which is 8%. And that'll give us 15681 you remember from your prerequisite course that the difference between what you expense and what you pay out in interest is the amount of discount you amortize. So if we started with $39.93 in an amortized discount, and now we have $681 that we've amortized of that, we have unamortized $33.12, which is the difference between $39.93 and $681. So now the net liability is what? It's your $200,000 in the face value of the bond minus the unamortized discount. So we do that calculation for you here, and you can see we have $196,688. We're going to use that ending net liability in order to calculate the interest expense for the second year, 2006. 
and that's going to give us an amortized discount of 735. But you remember at the beginning of X6 or year 6, we had 3312 unamortized, of which we've amortized 735 in 2006. So 2577 is left. So therefore, we're going to have a net liability at the end of 2006 of 197,423. In part three, it asks us to record interest expense at the end of 2000 or for 2005 and for the year end of 2006. And I can just pick the numbers right off the table. I know that every time I record interest expense, I amortize discount. The interest expense is here and the amount of discount I amortized for the year is here as well. And I also know that's an interest payment date. That's the day the interest was paid, so I'm going to credit cash 15000 So, now, let's assume something different. Let's assume now that uh, they had a year end of September 30th. So now we're going to be looking some point in time in this spot because what we're thinking now is we'll, we're going to need to accrue some interest on September 30th. What that means when we talk about accruing interest is we need to book interest expense from the date of issue, which in this case was January 1st, to the year end, which is September 30th. So now we have to figure out how much of this total 12-month interest expense gets allocated for the period beginning January 05, ending September 30th, 05. So we want to allocate nine months of that, or from January to the end of September, of that interest expense. So we can record on the income statement up to September 30th how much expense there is. This is a whole year of expense. We only want expense for nine months from January 1 to September 30th. So to book the interest expense, we're going to book 11761, which is the entire year, but only nine twelfths of it. Amortized discount, this is discount for the year, but we only want nine twelfths of it to, to amortize. And then our interest payable, we're going to accrue. Notice here when we did it on December 31st, what we did is because we were paying interest that day, we credited cash. But our interest won't be paid until December 30th. So we have to accrue to pay on, on December 31st how much interest um, has accumulated in favor of the investor over the nine-month period that the bonds have been outstanding. So from January 1st, which is the date they were issued, to the end of the year. So that means that 15000 has to be allocated over nine months. And it's not cash because we don't pay it till December 31st. It's an interest payable. So now when we get to December 31st to make the interest payment, what are we going to record? Well, what we're going to record here is a debit to the interest payable. Why? Because we accrued the interest payable to be paid on December 31st. We accrued it at the end of the year so we could update the liability balances on our balance sheet at September 30th, 2005. So what we pay out in interest on December 31st helps us to reduce that obligation that we set up in September right? Now we have to book the remainder of the interest expense. We booked interest expense for nine months of 12. Now we have to book it for three months of 12. This 15681 is for the whole year. We only want it for three months from October to December. Recall that at, at September 30th, we recorded the interest expense for nine months. Now we've got to go back and grab the last three months of the total year's interest expense. And that's going to give us 39.20. So now to calculate the amount of discount we're amortizing, we amortized 681 for the year, but only for nine months. Here we're going to amortize the last three months from October to December. So we're going to credit the discount for 170. So this concludes our short video on a review of bonds, how to issue them, how to record interest payments, and how to accrue interest between interest payment dates. Now stay tuned for part two, and in part two we're going to introduce you to a new concept where the bond date and the issue date are different, and you're going to find out how that affects the proceeds we receive from the investor upon issuance of the bond.